What's going on you guys? It's Kevin Bagg here with a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be doing a Miami 2022 Amazon Sellers Conference recap. This event was hosted by Avery, Rome with the Roamer on Instagram, and Taylor Jones Official. Shout out to them. It was a great event. And here, we're just headed to the event right now. It was pretty early, but you guys are going to see who was speaking and maybe hopefully can hear good enough. Here with Mr. Billy Flips. What's up? Right now we are headed to the Miami 2022 venue. So yesterday I didn't record anything, but uh, today's the actual event, and hopefully I can get some footage. I believe it's just going to be a lot of networking and you know just paying attention to what the speakers have to say. So hopefully it's good. I'm going to show you guys a little pan around of where everybody's sitting. I was sitting next to Scott Needham, and we see Brian here. Watch this kid Amazon. What's good, Brian? Who's excited to be here? Right yes, sir. All right, you guys, so we're going to show you guys clips of the speakers here. Hopefully you can hear correctly, but the first one is going to be Scott Needham, smartest seller on Instagram. Then we got Trevin Peterson, private label guy. Following Trevin, it's Dave Can Read and Caleb Roth, big book guys. Then we got Morgan from Cajun Ventures up there. It was a great, great time. And then we got the one and only Amazon Lip. The final people, I forgot their names, but they went through Avery's book program and they learned a lot about Amazon and it's helped them out greatly. So I mean, it was a great insight into everybody's story slash business. And hopefully you guys can hear well enough. As you grow that, as you uh, scale the, the amount of products, on average, you're going to lose. They're playing a different game. They will lose $10 million just to be the cheapest on the internet. They'll lose that much money just because if Best Buy runs a promotion, they'll cut their prices by 50%. And I don't know about you guys, I'm not about to lose it, you know, thousands, tens of thousands of dollars to get the pricing more of that. So uh, about, uh, it was about a year ago, I did an analysis where I looked at our products competing against Amazon, and then here in the middle call, I had Amazon's in stock rate. So, and I was, I was just so excited. I didn't do any research. I was just like, oh, this is a good product. I ordered it within a, uh, a few weeks. It was at Amazon. It checks in. Literally within the first week, I sold out 90 units. And I was like, this is amazing. I'm just on cloud nine. I'm like, I figured this out. I'm going to retire. I'm going to make a million dollars. This is amazing. And little did I know, I was infringing on somebody's patent. So, luckily Drop Shop has not come after me to this point, but it says right here in their title, the original patented car seat gap filler. And I was dumb, I was oblivious, I didn't realize that you couldn't sell products that had patents on it. And they sent me an email, so they sent saying, hey, if you don't take this off, we're coming after you. So I basically pulled the listing, I ended up making a couple hundred bucks. Um, I did have quite a bit of inventory, but I still made some money. Again, I didn't spend any money on PPC. I didn't do anything. Whoa. It just skyrocketed, and then I got shut down, and I was like, ah, it worked, but it didn't. And so I was like, still motivated to keep going. So that's the first product that, I, that I've ever sold on Amazon. And so just a pro tip for you guys, go ahead and check if there's a patent on it. Um, you can literally pay somebody five bucks on fiber. Um, it may not be like a high-level attorney or whatever, but they'll give you a good kind of understanding of, hey, does this have potential of infringement on a patent? So, that is the first yeah, part. I, I am an entrepreneur. We, we go through the, you know, the statements we're saying this morning, I'm wealthy, I'm powerful. I'm an entrepreneur. I always identified with that, but I was too afraid to step away and actually quit that big job. So what did I do? I took the baby steps. I actually started doing books on the side. For those that follow our content, we have the 100 book challenge. And I just said, hey, if I can find 100 good books a week, what does that turn into? Behind it. There it is. Boom. So that's the, and then Matthew sends in regards. Matthew's one of my business partners. He uh, unfortunately can't be here. His wife has girls weekend, so they're off partying and he's got kid duty. So Matthew's here in spirit. He's actually doing Heart 75, so we couldn't drink it anyway. So whatever drinks you were going to buy, Matthew, buy the <laughs> So I eventually worked through the, the fear of going through and quitting my day job. And I'm a bit of a rebel. One of the things that's really important for each of you to understand is why are you doing what you're doing, right? We all think it's about the 
more money. That is important. Given the choice between being rich and being poor, we should all choose being rich. And then you realize that money doesn't solve all the problems. It certainly helps. But that's not what I was after. I was after freedom. So I rebelled against everything in the world, oh, right? right? The convenience, doing things the right way, documenting things. I just didn't want to do any of that. But what I found is once I finally worked up the nerve to quit my job, ramp up, I was just doing books, I wasn't doing software, I wasn't doing anything else. I realized that after a little bit, I didn't run a business, I didn't own a business. All I did is I owned a job. I went from having a job where I could actually take two, three, four weeks off a year, I could actually go home at night and not think about work. And all I had was I now owned my own job. And it's great, I was working for me, I was the boss, it was awesome. But I had to take some steps. And I don't know where everybody is in their journey, but I'm gonna share a little bit about that how do you go from owning a job, which is great, better than working for the man, and how do you make that subtle switch and get around the corner to where you actually own a business? So that's a little bit of my story. I was a cherry picker. I moved to Colorado where David and I actually met. We got a, we got a great intro story. I kind of met online. Somebody said that there was, yeah. Somebody said there was this, uh, this new upstart in, in uh, Denver. I've been there probably two, three years. We've never run into each other. David, of course, is this massive bookseller. I was a little pet sweet. And I don't remember who introduced him. Someone from out of state. For uh, I don't remember. But anyway, they were like, hey, you guys should meet. David sends me a cold email and says, hey, this is kind of weird. I'm getting ready to go to Brazil for like a month. I would love to pick your brain. Let's grab a coffee. Let's say hello. But can we schedule something like four to six weeks out? Which normally means we're never going to make out. And we actually did hit it off. He's actually done a good job locking up every source in Denver that I had to move back to Indiana because there's no books for me. So that, that's my story. I, I read a we'll, we'll come back to that in a minute. David, why don't you go? Yeah, I mean, similar to Caleb. Well, first off, it's a beautiful day in Miami. I feel kind of like an idiot wearing a jacket, but uh, that being said, I brought a shirt that was a little oversized, and so just kind of covered that up. Or if you guys want to feed me later, I'll kind of fill it until later tonight, so I'll leave that up to you. But um, my, my story is very similar to Caleb's, uh, except I had just graduated high school. Uh, I was looking for a job, and so my friend told me, he was like, hey, you should come work at Baskin Robbins. I'm making about $50 a day, including tips. That's uh, a really great gig. And uh, long story short, I ended up uh, following my dad's advice and buying used books and selling them on Amazon. And uh, yeah, that worked out. Four, 12 years later, I met Caleb, so about two years ago. I've been selling on Amazon since 2008, so uh, pretty much better part of uh, 14 years now. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, similar to Caleb, when I was 20 years old, I really had to sit down and figure out, you know, what do I want in life? And I think if, um, I know you guys are selling all sorts of different things, but if there's one question that you should really answer today or over the next couple of days is, you know, if you already have an answer is, you know, what do you hope to get out of the business? What do you hope, out of, uh, hope to get out of what you're actively working on? Because similar, I, I love using analogies, but you would never hop into a car and say, I'm really hungry, just hit the road looking around. And, and if you really love helping people make money on Amazon, it totally changed our life. So it's crazy when we started selling on Amazon, Brooks' background, he was a sugar cane farmer and I was a waitress. And we both made $400 a week. So getting crazy numbers like this is just mind-boggling. But the thing about us is we are not Amazon gurus. We are just normal, everyday people who work really, really hard. We actually started selling on Amazon. I grabbed a book off my bookshelf, I listed it, it sold overnight. Did not have a lot of money to invest when we started. So whenever we started, we would go to Goodwill, we get eight books for a dollar, and we're thinking, oh man, can we really afford to lose these five dollars? That's where we were at in life. But slowly but surely, we just kept reinvesting our profits back into our business, and that's how our business continued to grow. So one of our goals was for to quit our jobs and travel the world in a splinter van, and we actually were able that. Um, the most important thing to us on social media and in real life is we never want our life to seem perfect because it's not. We just want to be authentic and 
real. And we think if you have information that can positively change somebody else's life, you should share it. So after the speakers were done, we went out and got dinner. There were some other speakers that didn't get to record, unfortunately, but hopefully you guys can see a video coming out on Avery's channel or somewhere where you'll be able to see them. We went out to get dinner, went out with the boy Billy, Seth, also known as Checkmate Flips, Lane Resells, FBA Wiley, Ryan, Supplying, great guys, got some burgers, and went to the beach for a little bit just to check it out. Didn't go inside, though. And then... uh Came to the after party here. I'm going to show you guys the venue empty um, and we're going to show some shots here of the final days after this and hopefully I can give you guys a, re a recap at the end as well. All right, you guys, this is the venue for the Miami 2022. It's pretty empty right now, but most definitely going to be full later for the after party. Got Steve Rakin, camera crew, Mr. Billy Flips. And that was the after party, you guys basically just networking, you know, having a good time, speaking to other Amazon sellers. Got some pictures here, side hustle experiment, Ryan supplying, we got checkmate flips, we got FBA Wiley, watch this kid Amazon Brian, and Romer the Romer. So the following morning, Billy and I, since we were staying at the same Airbnb, we went out and had breakfast with the one and only Alex K from FBA Boys and their warehouse slash shipping manager, Josh. I believe that's his title. Uh, we were driving in Alex's rented 
M3, crazy story, um, actually got towed, but you guys are going to see probably a clip here. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was a great time with these guys. We were just chopping it up. Shout out FBA boys. Shout out Josh. Great dudes. First time riding in one of these, so it's the experience. And yeah, man, just got to get out the trenches. FBA boys living, bro. They living. So here you guys see our picture, me and Alex K, what a legend. But you guys, that is going to conclude Miami 22 trip video. It was a great time, can't express that enough. Never been to an event like this, well, period, I haven't been to an event like ever like this, or you know, like to network and stuff like that. So it was quite the experience, first time in Miami as well. I've been to Florida, but it was my first time in Miami. It was a great time talking to all the people, learned a lot from everybody there. And there's really no telling, you know, where this type, these types of businesses can go. But yeah, you guys, I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, please make sure to go ahead and subscribe down below. It really helps out the channel. Tell me what you think of the event. If you're going to want to come next year or anything like that. If you went to the event, how was it? Comment down below. Really do appreciate it. Thanks for watching to the very end. And as always, stay great.